Hi, everyone, and welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. Welcome to my vidcast, where I talk about all things pop culture, from anime to film to television to novels, music, and sometimes video games. But I have so much fun doing it. Be sure to like this video, leave me a comment, tell me what you think, and subscribe. And I would appreciate it if you would tell others to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000. I'm almost to 700, so more than halfway there. I would appreciate any and all. So you might be wondering, Jacob, usually you try to wear a shirt that corresponds with the topic you're talking about. And that is true, and that doesn't always happen, I, but I do try to bring them together. But today I'm going to be talking about Conan the Barbarian, but before I do that, I just wanted to note... I am wearing my Naruto shirt. Maybe you saw on social media that I got into a little dust up with some folks who were bashing anime. I just can't stand for that. So you can go over to my Twitter at Real Jacob Berry if you're curious about how that worked out. But anyway, um, enough of that. I wanted to talk about um, The Siege of the Black Citadel by Chuck Dixon. Now, I have mentioned Chuck Dixon several times on this vidcast over and over again. Chuck Dixon is one of my all-time favorite comic book writers, and I'm not just blowing smoke here. It's true. He's the co-creator of Bane, one of Batman's worst enemies that now we have seen in multiple media, right? He's been in animation. He's been in live action twice, three times, actually, if you count Gotham as the TV show, and just so many others. And one of the things that he is known for where he kind of got his, uh, I don't want to say chops because he was already kind of experienced at this point, but where he kind of became more of a household name is in the 80s, he wrote The Savage Sword of Conan for Marvel Comics. And of course, like I said, he would go on to write for Batman. He would write a lot of Tim Drake's early tales. He uh, would do um, G.I. Joe, I believe, for um, IDW Comics and just... Uh, um, oh, and also for Dreamwave. He did a few for Dreamwave as well. One of my favorites from him is he actually wrote a tale about General Grievous, about these rogue Jedi who go off to try to assassinate General Grievous in the midst of the Clone Wars, despite being ordered by the Jedi Council. You know, we don't do assassinations, but this group of rogue Jedi go off to confront General Grievous. It is an amazing, fascinating tale. I don't think it's in print anymore, but if you find a copy of it, definitely get a, get a hold of it because it's a fantastic Star Wars tale. But he is returning to Conan the Barbarian with this new series from um, that he's launching. I believe he's doing it through Arkhaven Comics, but um, it is called The Siege of the Black Citadel, Chuck Dixon's Conan Number 1. And... I just finished reading it, and it's fantastic. I know a lot of us are kind of hurting for fantasy um, series, for science fiction even, with a lot of great sort of masculine um, characters, you know, because we all, you know, masculinity is under attack right now in all forms of media. And so one of the things I wanted to show about this is, I, for one thing, I love this cover. I, I can't remember who did the cover art for it, but... It's it's fantastic. Um, Castilia. Oh, and uh, also Castilia House is the is the publisher for it, by the way. And um, this is just a uh, okay. Ademir Liel did the cover art, and I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Please let me know in the comments below, because I mean no disrespect. I'm just terrible at reading names. But I'm gonna read you the back. The Mad Emperor Strabonis sits upon the imperial throne of Koth, a danger to his subjects and Koth's neighbors alike. When his cousin Prix Esathomaeus raises an army in rebellion, he finds great support within and without the empire. Veterans, legionnaires, gold, and mercenaries flow into the prince's camp, including the one barbarian sword for hire from the frigid north. The towering black citadel stands between the rebel prince and the throne he seeks, and when its siege threatens to continue well into winter, the prince orders a small team of sail swords to find a way into the ancient fortress called Talas Krith, but the black citadel is guarded by things more terrible than walls and swords. 
fantastic description right there. <laughs> but as you can see, it's a novella. It's very easy to read. It's very fun to read. Whether you're a fan of Conan the Barbarian or not, I think that you will enjoy this. It is a, an excellent book. It's one that will, honestly, I think that, you know, folks who want to make media such as films or televisions or animation based on Conan, they should come to this story. It doesn't hold back. It definitely explores that old school sort of Conan the Barbarian that we're that we've been missing uh, in a you know in a land that's unforgiving, that's harsh. It is a fascinating. And me being a big Robert E. Howard fan to begin with, I've read several of the Conan stories. I don't want to say I've read all of them because there's so many, but I am a I have read a lot of them. And this definitely captures that original sort of magic. Now, Conan the Barbarian uh, has passed into the public domain, so I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of Conan the Barbarian properties. But definitely uh, check out uh, Chuck Dixon's version because it is fantastic. Now, before you write a Conan the Barbarian story, some aspects of Conan are still trademarked and copyrighted. So do your research before you write a Conan the Barbarian story. But for what it's worth, I think that uh, Chuck Dixon, who is no stranger to these kinds of IPs, he definitely did his research. He did a fantastic job, and I can't wait to see when the second one comes out and what it'll be about. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, that you'll leave me a comment, tell me what you think, that you'll share it out with your friends, and of course, consider subscribing to Studio Jake. I cover all kinds of nerd and pop culture topics, including film, television, anime, comic books, and so much more. I hope that you'll also head over to my main website, studiojakemedia.com, where I have even more news, views, and commentary. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, head over to my Locals page. That's studiojakemedia.locals.com. It's the best way to support me. I'm trying to build a little community there. I have exclusive reviews and articles, so definitely head over there and check it out. And I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.